Hello and welcome to the series on Microsoft Power Apps. In this video, we're going to be looking at our employee detail screen and populating it with information of the selected employee. So first thing that I want to do is go to my insert menu and select gallery. So from the drop down, you can select gallery and I will select flexible height gallery. This will add the gallery to our application. First thing I want to do is rename it. So I'll rename it to employee detail gallery. Note that you, can, you can't have two galleries with the same name, so this has to be a unique name. You can give it any name or leave it with the default name, but I will rename it to employee detail gallery. Next thing you want to do is go to your property explorer and select items. By default, it's got the custom gallery sample, and that's what's displaying the information that you see on the screen. But I want this to be displaying the information from the selected employee. So to do that, I will, I will rename that to uh, employee gallery dot selected. So basically what this does, it populates the gallery with information from uh, the employee gallery. So if you're in the employee, uh, employee screen and you select one of these employees, the information that's displayed in the employee detail screen will be displayed. So let's select our gallery and uh, let's delete some of the items that we don't need. And that just leaves it with uh, the image. So let's select our gallery again and let's just resize it to, to the size that we want to use. And um, you can position it any way you want. I'll just make it uh, how it is on the screen. If you select the image, let's rename the image. Uh, you could delete the image, but it's not necessary. We're going to be using the component. And let's name it to employee detail image. And if you press enter, it will rename it. I also want to resize this image. Uh, so we have to make sure that it's set to fill. This will make it fill the entire size of the image. And I also want to change the, the size of the actual image. So I will rename re, uh, this or uh, reset the size to 400. And I also set the height to 400. And let's just move this back into the screen. And what this does, it makes the, the image a square. And what I want to do is I want to set the radius for this image. And if I set the radius to the same size as the height and width, it will make the image round. Great, I did do a previous video on how to do that. So if you want more information on how to do that, I would uh, suggest that you look at the uh, video. Great, so what we also need to do is add a label. So if you go to your insert menu and you select a label, this will insert a label. I also want to insert a background uh, shape that will be used uh, uh, on the screen. So if we go to our icons and we scroll all the way down, uh, you could also select uh, an image if you had an image, but I don't have an image, so I will be using uh, a shape for our background. And I'll be selecting the rectangle and I will resize this uh, rectangle to the shape that I want. And I'll make it. Uh, I'll make the shape this uh, this dimension. I will go into the properties of the shape. I will select the, uh, set the color, and I will go to custom color. And in the hex value, I will change that value to BAE one F two. Great. So um, you can use any any color you want here. You could use any shape. Um, or you could use an image if you had an image. I just want to use this as a background uh, for my employees' information. So first thing what we should do is we should select the rectangle and select reorder and send this to, to uh, the back. So now you can see we have um, our circle of our image and we have our rectangle as well. I want to go back to the label. I want to rename this label to name.
and uh, we can position it in a minute but if you select the item you can see the text that's displayed there is this item and we can rem remove that compliance so this item is referring to the item that was selected so the employee that was selected in our employee screen so i want to put this with the employee's name so if we type name you can see from the drop down we have the option for the name i want to use the ampersand for concatenation I did a previous video on concatenation, so check that out as well. And I will use quotation, open quotation marks, space, close quotation marks. And what that does is add a space in between there or a empty character. I'll use the ampersand again and uh, I will add the surname. So I'll type this item dot surname. So basically what that does, it creates a concatenation of the employee's name and the employee's surname. So concatenation is just joining two strings and in between those strings, we have an empty uh, uh, character. You could also put uh, a minus sign between there or you could type any text and that would be displayed uh, in between the two uh, strings. But I just want to leave that as an empty string. So let's select the um, name and we will expand the size of this to um, fit our, our screen on how uh, how we want it and if we go into the properties of the text i will change the size to 60 and i will make it bold and i will center it and i will change the color to white Great, so you can see we have our background shape with our image and the name. Let's add the employee's department. So if we add a lab another label, we can drag that down and we can replace this with, uh, set the text to this item dot department. And we can set the color or we can set first the size to 20 and let's set the um, color to white maybe we want to set the size to uh, a bigger value so uh, let's go back to the size and we can set this to 30 just to make it look a little bit clearer and yeah that looks great let's rename the department label to uh, detail department we already have a, a label called department so we can't have two with the same name that's why I named it de detail department and let's add another label for um, position so uh, this would be this item position and we need to set the text uh, size or font size to 30. And we also need to make it uh, white. And let's rename the label to detail position. We actually need to resize this. So um, let's make this a little bit bigger. And lastly, let's add an email address. So if we grab the email address, uh, grab the label and we position it under department and we give it a uh, text value of uh, email, this item.email. And that would display the employee's email address. Let's do the same thing and resize it. So we'll set the text value to, uh, or the font size to 30. And we will set the uh, color to white. What we also need to do, we also need to uh, position this. I'll actually move this down because the email address might be a bit uh, long for some employees. So we might need it to fill the entire uh, screen. So um, let's change the text um, alignment for, for the name and let's move these other items to align them.
Great. So play around with that positioning and the alignment. And also, if you want to use a different background image, you can do that. But I will leave this uh, as, as I have it on the screen. The last thing that I need to do is add an icon for the back uh, button. So we'll go, we'll select the top, uh, top bar and we will go to the insert menu and we will select icons. And under icons, you can see we have an icon for back. And if we select that, let's just position it next to home. And we need to change the color of the, the icon. So if we go to the property explorer, and if we select color, we can remove the RGBA value. You could put a manual value in there if you wanted to, but we have already set that up in our template. So if we type template, header bar icon, and we scroll down, it will make it the same color as our home icon and the other icons. Let's select the icon again. We need to, we need to make it functional. So if we go to on select, and if we set the function in on select to navigate, And we want to navigate back to the employee screen. So we'll type employee, employee screen, comma, uh, transition cover. You can choose a different uh, transition, but because we use transition cover for the other transi transitions, um, I would like to keep it the same. So great. So now we can see the employee information. Uh, we've got our back button and uh, let's give it a try. So if you press F5 or you click on the play button, the application will load. And let's go back and let's select another employee. And if you click on the employee, you can see now it's displaying a different employee's information. We have their name, we have their, uh, their department, in this case, which is HR, and her position. And we also have the email address. So you can see it's displaying all of the employee's information. Um, what you could also do is you could add functionality to uh, um, the email address so you could add a flow or power, uh, power automate process that would uh, send her an email or we could also add a button and when clicking on that button we could also add another uh, power um, automate process that would call the employee or we could add some additional functionality for now i'll be leaving it as is but play around and let me know what you think in the comments and i will see you in the next video